Amen. I do believe it is time to begin service tonight. I want everybody to just smile. Just smile. And <laughs> just smile. You say, well, Pastor, I sure don't feel like smiling. But smile anyway. Now, I guarantee you that it's much easier to smile than if I just say it, frown on purpose. You know it's very difficult to just frown on purpose. But it's much easier because you use much less muscles to, to smile than you do to frown. Right? And so, but anyway, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I want to open service by asking you a question. Asking you a question. And that is, if everybody in the church was exactly like me, what kind of church would this be? If, if everybody in the church was exactly like you, what kind of, you say, well, Pastor, it is time to pray, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Let's all go to God in prayer. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you tonight. We come before you asking that you bless and move by your spirit. I pray, God, that you save the unsaved, that you heal, feel with the Holy Ghost, deal with the hearts of men and women, show forth your power, your glory, your dominance. And God, we come before you. We worship you exclusively, for thou shalt have no other God before us. Lord, we give you all.
seated. Amen. If you can. Amen. As soon as you hit that for me, brother, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Brother Steele's going to look something up for me real quick. And uh, I want to uh, I want to talk about something that's very important. And the uh, question was posed to me about the ministry and about the things of God and and uh, it so moved my heart and my life that I thought it would be proper to preach on it tonight but uh, he found this early. Hebrews 5 and 4 Hebrews 5 and 4, thank you brother uh, I want to read a scripture to you, and if I don't accomplish anything else tonight, I believe that I would have, what was it now, brother? Hebrews 5 and 4. Hebrews 5 and 4. I want to share something with you tonight that I believe will be helpful. Uh, someone asked me a question today about the ministry, about can somebody just go into the ministry because they want to go into the ministry. And, and I think that's a good question. Because I believe in my heart that there's a lot of people in the ministry that shouldn't be in the ministry. I really do. And you say, well, why can you say that? I can tell by the way they treat the ministry. I can tell by the way they function in the that they don't belong in the ministry. And Hebrews 5 and 4 tells us that no man can take this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as error. Error was the high priest. So, and then there's other scriptures. I, I don't want to get too involved in this. But there's a lot of things in life, if you're interested in it, you can go to school and you can, uh, like if you want to be a mechanic. You may grow up watching somebody work on cars and you can go to school, get your mechanics credentials and go into uh, auto, auto mechanic repair things, auto repair or whatever, or be a mechanic. How about that? Or if you grow up interested in the anatomy and things of that nature, you can become a doctor. You can become a nurse. You can go to school and take the proper tests and do all these different things. Or if you want to be a politician or if you want to uh, be a uh, uh, what you call a person that draws blood. Uh, a phlebotomist and and you know, if you want to do botany, be interested in plant life and things of that nature, you can go to school. But the ministry, you can't do it that way. The only way that you can be in the ministry is that God's got to call you. You can't just, oh, that looks cool, that looks interesting, that looks fun to do, that looks like something I would like. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being interested. There's nothing wrong with being fascinated because as a young boy, I watched my uncle pastor the church that I grew up in. And I was never, I was fascinated by the ministry. I was interested in what he did, but at that time, I didn't feel like God was calling me to do it. But I do remember as a teenager, that God, by the Holy Ghost in the service, dealt in my heart. But I didn't understand. And I'm telling you the truth tonight. God came to me as a teenager and began to deal with me about being saved and being more. But I didn't understand it. And so I told God at that time in this service, I had it worked out. Just come back to me at another time because I don't know what's going on with that. I don't understand. And it was, and it's so sad 
Because no one at the church at that time was somebody I could lean on. Except for my uncle, and I didn't feel comfortable. Not that he was, I loved him, he loved me, and I respected him, but I didn't feel comfortable enough to approach him in that way. You understand what I'm saying? I had him on such a high pedestal. I didn't, I didn't think it was, I just didn't feel that type of boldness. But there should have been some uh, younger ministers and different people in the church who could mentor and that you could look up to that I should have been able to go to. But, be that as it may, I, um, I grew up, I left home, I joined the military, I joined the military before I left home, actually. I rode the Amtrak, my mother took, my mother and a driver took us down to the Amtrak station. I'll never forget it. And I rode the Amtrak from Atlanta, Georgia, on an overnight train all the way up to Trenton, New Jersey, on a sleeper. And I'll never forget it. And I got off, I went to basic training, that was a whole another experience for another time. I finished my basic training, I went to Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, for my AIT, Advanced Individual Training. I went there, got trained, I became a chapel activity specialist, which is known also as a 71 mic, a chaplain's assistant. I, was, I became a chaplain's assistant. And so I came home on leave for two weeks, and then I left to go to Washington State to where I was going to have my permanent part. I arrived in Washington State. I arrived in Washington State June 1984. June 1984, I arrived. And I got out there, I was doing my thing in the streets, in the clubs, you name it, I was doing it. And I had another guy that was in the same job I was doing. He belonged to to, at that time, it wasn't New Testament Christian Church. It was New Testament Church of God. And he was attending New Testament Church of God. He was a good guy. I really liked him. He said, you want to go to church with me? And uh, it was a Thursday night. He said, we, we, we have church Thursday night. And uh, I said, sure, I go to church. I've been going to church all my life. Going to church ain't no big deal to me. You know, like it is to some people. I grew up in church. Going to a church service is like second nature to me. I kid you not. I can't tell you how many church services I sat in from, from a little child up to an adult. Probably hundreds or thousands of church services. We had church on Tuesday night, Friday night. We had Saturday uh, children's. Uh, we had choir practice and all this other. And we did had other church activities Sunday morning and Sunday night. Amen. Back in the day. So going to church to me was not a big deal. And it's still not a big deal. Amen. I love church. I love the things of God. I love the word of God. I love the spirit of God. That doesn't bother me. I don't have an issue with God. But anyway, so I was going to church. So brother took me to, uh, and I got there. Reverend Espinosa was standing there at the door. He greeted me. And uh, it's the first time I ever been in the church with mostly all white people. It was different. I said, man, what in the world? And uh, I got that. You know, Reverend Espinosa was Mexican. And then mostly everybody else was white. And I guess the only two black people were there was me and Brother Walter and one that brought me. Amen. But that was cool. I had a problem with it. It was just different. You know what I mean? And uh, so... I said, well, we'll see what happens. Reverend Espinosa got up and he started preaching and that's all it took. That's all it took. I felt the presence of God. I knew God was there. I could feel it. the people were so friendly to me when I arrived. The people were so friendly to me, I didn't know how to deal with that because I wasn't used to people doing that. Amen. Being that nice. Being that friendly. You're like, man, what's going on? You know, I started feeling 
Like, man, uh, what, what, you, what you want? You know what I'm saying? What you trying to do? Amen? Because I'm not used to people getting up on me like that. Amen? But they were just being friendly. They were just being Christians. They were just welcoming me to the house of God. Amen. But I enjoyed it so much. I loved it so much. That night, that night, I made it that Thursday night. It didn't take two weeks. It didn't take three weeks. It didn't take a month. It didn't take two months. It didn't take me six months. It didn't take me a year. That night, I decided that that was going to be my church. Amen. That night, yes, I made my mind up. I said, there's something here that I've never experienced before. And I'm going to keep coming until I find out. Because it's different from the church I grew up in. Yeah. It's different from what I'm accustomed to. And I got to check on this. I got to see what's going on. And so, as many of people that God has dealt with like that. And because they didn't go about it the right way. Because it wasn't what they were used to. Because the songs was different than what they were used to. If what you were used to was so great, you still be there. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. But you don't think about it like that. Man, if it ain't like what I'm used to, I don't want to be bothered by what you used to ain't helping you. Amen. What you if, if what you're used to is not helping you to change, it's not helping you to get better, it's not helping you to grow, it's not challenging you. I need to be challenged to get better. I need to be challenged to be more like Jesus. And that's what Reverend Espinosa did when he opened up the Bible. And if I remember correctly, God help me if I'm wrong. I don't mean to be wrong if I'm wrong. He, he opened up Romans chapter 6. How shall we... How, how, how does it go? Romans chapter 6. I'll just turn to it real quick that way I don't get it wrong. He said, what shall we say then? I want you to listen at this. I mean, he preached the unadulterated gospel that night. He said, the verse says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? In other words, to keep sinning and then saying that grace has me covered. The Bible said, God forbid. Yes, grace does not cover your past, present, and future sins. Yes, That's not biblical. That's not biblical. There is no such thing as a as a uh, what, what these people are? A, a sinner saved by grace. There is no such thing as that. It's not biblical. Amen. So Romans six says, "What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are what dead to sin live any longer therein?" And he just started knocking down all the myths. And all of the things that I could make an excuse about, and he just preached the word of God, and it so touched me, it so moved me that I wanted to stay, I wanted to keep going, and it didn't matter to me that it was only like 15 or 20 people there at that time. I made up my mind, and I challenge every one of you right now, just like I was in 1984. I'm going to help make a difference. I'm going to go out and I'm going to pray to people and I'm going to do my part because this is my church. That's my preacher. And I believe that God is involved. Amen. Yes, sir. I said, that's my preacher. Yes, sir. I love Reverend Yes. I still love him even though he's dead and gone. We still love Sister Espinosa. We still love the Espinosa family yes. because he was through them. Reverend Espinosa would say, come on over and spend the night. Huh? Spend the night and hang out. Huh? Let's go do something. Huh? Let's have a good time. Huh? And he raised me up. Huh? He taught me. Huh? He showed me the way. Huh? He showed me how to love people. Huh? He showed me how to carry myself in the ministry. Huh? He took me with him. People uh, who was down and out. Uh, he said, Come on and get in the trunk with me. Uh, and 
it's time to get better. It's time to grow up. Amen. And so, the question was asked me, I said, the ministry is not like if you want to be a doctor or if you want to be a lawyer mm -hmm. or if you want to be a nurse or if you want to be a, a nurse practitioner or if you want to be a health worker. Or, all those things are noble. All those things are wonderful. All those things are necessary. But if you want to be in the ministry, you can't do it that way. It has to come from God. Yes. I said it's got to come yes. from God. Yes. So Sister Monica, Sister Monica, so I was sitting in church one Thursday night. This was like two or three months down the line. I was sitting in church one night. It was a Thursday night. I'll never forget it. I was sitting on this side of the church. If I remember correctly, if I'm facing this way, it's hard to remember. It's been so long. But I was sitting like middle ways back. And Reverend Espinosa was up preaching. And he was, I don't even remember what he was talking about. And while he was preaching, God put it in my spirit. God put it in my spirit. He said, I want you to preach the gospel. And I want you to go. And he claimed that I'll never forget the call of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'll never forget it. Yes. Usually when God calls you, it's usually in a spiritual atmosphere some kind of way. In church, praying, reading your Bible, soul winning, whatever. It's usually happens in some kind of spiritual environment. And God called me. And my wife would continue the story about how when she got saved, how she said, I just feel like, I just feel like God wants me to do something. I just feel like I'm in the need tonight that God, God wants me to do something. I dare you to believe God tonight. I dare you to believe God tonight. I dare you to step up and say, God, I'm going to be man enough. I'm going to be woman enough to answer the call of God. Are you with me to answer the, tonight in this service? Jesus is calling. I said, Jesus is calling. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you you said, but I got a lot of things that need to be worked out. You think God can help you work them out? Right. You think God can help you get things cleared up? Amen. Jesus is calling me tonight. Yes. Thank you. My, uh, my text tonight, ironically, and this is funny because this question was asked me this evening. Wasn't it this evening? This morning? Or was it this evening? Um, but anyway, it don't matter. But anyway, it don't matter. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Huh? Okay. Many are called, a few are chosen. And then Romans 11 and 29. Let's look at that. Amen. And let's, we're going to get to God tonight. I said we're going to get to God tonight. Amen. Romans 11 and 29. If I can get to it, I'm so excited. Amen. What's that song? I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Amen. Romans 11 and 29. The Bible says, for the gifts and call, even if God gives you a gift, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So do know this. Once you are called, God never changes his mind. You may run, you may quit, you may throw it away, you may say you're not going to do it anymore, but you'll answer the call. You'll answer the call. And even being called, do you not know being saved is being called? Don't you know God calls us to be saved? But being called into the ministry is different. But being called to be saved, he said, he, he come that all men might be saved. I want you to stand with me right now. I 
I want you to stand with me right now. And I want you to put your hands up in the air. And I want you to just start calling on Jesus. I want you to start calling on. I sense the presence of God in this place. I sense the presence of God in this place. Jesus is calling. I say Jesus is calling. He's calling somebody around. Somebody that's watching this service. Jesus is calling. God is dealing with hearts. I say God is dealing with